Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Piotr Wygotsky, and I came here from Poland. And I'm going to talk about how to design C++ impl implementations of, uh, of complex com combinatorial algorithms. And in order to do that, I'm going to uh, design uh, implementation of the local search method. And, uh, but here I, I do not assume any like domain specific knowledge, so I'm going to explain what the local search is. And uh, we are here to talk about C++, not about optimization. So like everything's supposed to be included. I mean, everything concerning optimization, and uh, it's supposed to be also easy. So, ask any question if you if something's not clear. Uh, okay, so this is the outline of the talk. So, first, uh, first I'm going to introduce you to local search. Um, it is actually crucial to understand this because later on we are we are going to discuss the design decisions and they are of course implied by the used model. So this is going to be easy and it's important to understand it. And so after our frame framework is designed, uh, we are going, going to focus the, on the more specific usage. So, and here I, I'm going to show you like more like complex usage of the library. And when we are done, we are, I'm going to show you some, maybe some part of implementation. Maybe more like idea of the implementation. Um, so, let's go. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk, I'm, I'm not going to just give you like formal definition of local search, Actually, there is no formal definition because it's rather a name of whole group of, of techniques. Of, and also, in order to, to, to just give you intuition what that is, I'm going to show you just two, two examples. The first one is very basic one, very easy. And the second one is more like a real world case to show you that it might help you to solve like more complex problems. Uh, so what is local search? We've got we've got a function which is supposed to be maximized and you've got one specific point and here we see that this is not the best point because for for example this one is is better, yes? And this one is even better. So what can we do to improve our solution? Like the simplest idea. <laughs> trace along your data set until you hit where you start decreasing it? Yeah, so what, what can we do? We just move our point a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right and check if that improves our solution, yes? And this is like a very simple idea and this is the main idea of the local search, yes? Yeah. So we, can, we have two possible moves here and we call this neighborhood of this, of this point x. We can move it to the right or to the left. And we see that, oh, this point to the right is better, so we, we modify our solution and we go on until, until we are in the so-called local, local maximum. This point is called local maximum. And you see that this method is not perfect because we didn't reach the global maximum, yes? So this is just heuristics, but sometimes that's all we have. And, and this one works very well in many practical cases. So, and this point is called global maximum here. So it's supposed to be like very easy and very clear. So are there any questions? Okay, so this is the main idea. And when you think about it, you can always think about this picture although the use cases are going to be very, very different from that. <coughs> so a local search just finds the max local maximum or local minimum, that's it? That's the definition of local search? Uh, the, I, I'm not going to give you like strict definition, but this is like, local search is a method of 
of optimizing our function. Yes, and this method assumes that we have like initial point, <coughs> and this the idea of of improving this point is just to explore the n local neighborhood of this point for and and in this neighborhood we try to find the better points and we just go on this is yes i don't know i know that this is not very like strict definition but i think this this is good definition for this talk yes well, one node depending on the size of your neighborhood you might not even end up in the real local maximum Yes. <coughs> and here I'm going to show you pseudocode. Uh, and what's going on here? So let's focus on this, focus on this inner loop. OK, so we've got the, some initial solution x. This is our starting point. And we, we explore the moves in the neighborhood of, of x. Uh, here we check if our move is improving. So if there is a gain of applying our move on our solution, and if yes, we apply this move. And we just iterate this, this procedure. <coughs> and this actually illustrates one specific uh, strategy in the local search, because here we find the first move that improves our solution. And this is not the only strategy, because we can, for example, find the best move that improves our solution. Yes, but this is one particular strat strategy in local search. Um, and I'm going to talk about this uh, in, in more details later on. So this is just to give you like the, the idea. It's, is it clear? Any questions? OK. Now I'm going to talk like about more sophisticated example. And this problem is called facility location. And in this problem, we we would like to locate some number of facilities. So it they might be hospitals or parks or this kind of things. So each of these points represents uh, the place where we can build. Uh, a facility and also a place where are the potential clients of this facility so now I'm going to give you a def the, like more like the formal definition but later on I will just show you an example and example I think explains everything so in this facility location problem we've got two possible cost costs so the first cost is the cost of building a facility that's kind of self-explanatory obvious and second one is transportation costs, and it is defined as for each facility we define transportation costs as the as the distance to the closest chosen facility, and we here we consider the total transportation cost as just sum of all, all of these costs for for the clients. If if it was, if it was not clear, just don't worry and check this example. So we, here we decided to build two facility two facilities, the red one and the blue one. And the cost of this red one is $30. The cost of the blue one is $40. And now, for each client, <coughs> we connect this client to the closest facility. And we the, this distance is, is measured. And here, this distance is $5. <coughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and here is the same, here is the same. And this distance is a little bit like bigger so it's eight bucks and so on so on you've got the picture and our total cost is just the sum of all these costs it's is it clear any questions so it looks more like real world problem yes it's still toy problem but you, it's like more like real world real world problem so how, how to solve this problem using the local search method? This is the question. So we can represent the solution of this problem. Uh, it can be represented by the set of chosen facilities, yes? And we would like to like modify this set like a little bit to and check if this improves our solution. So any ideas? How can we modify this set? Uh, 
take one out. Yes, that's right. So we can, the first, first possible move is to add one facility which is not chosen. And we check that if this, the other possible type of move is to remove the facility. And there is swap move. This is more complicated, like we, we open one not chosen facility and close one that is chosen. Yes, and of course we can just, there are many other types of moves that you can consider. <coughs> uh, so, and actually we, we've, we've implemented this, this algorithm, we've got some use cases, uh, and this just, this, and this problem is very hard. In general, we don't know how to solve this problem efficiently. Uh, it's NP hard. If it doesn't matter what it means. And for our use cases, this this a local search which uses these three possible moves, it's it's very often uh, finds optimal solution. So it it works. And if you just use only these two two moves, you just you're just within five percent to the to the best one. On, on, of course, on some set of, of instances. So, and also you might see that real-world cases are complicated. So here we've got two two possible costs, but in world cases, real-world case you have you can have like twenty possible cost functions. And you know the idea is still the same. You can still use this local search, and it works. And you can add number of constraints and. You can treat one facility in a special way, and it it it's very easy to to write this local search algorithm <coughs> still, and that's why it works very well in uh, real world real world settings. So now we are going to design our library, and so here here are our main goals. Yes, yeah? so. It's supposed to be easy to use. That's kind of obvious. If someone decided to program it in C++, it ca he cares about efficiency for, for sure. So it's supposed to be efficient. And also, our research showed that other local search libraries, like um, they they perform many like additional computation. I, I mean, you, you would like to make something very simple, and this, this other frameworks com perform many additional computation, like or like computing some advanced statistic or statistics, or like creating new threads and s this kind of things. And here we just assume that our our algorithm is supposed to do exactly what is what is what it is designed to do. So, what is this desired to do? So this is kind of important here. And loose coupling, <coughs> this means that entities that are not dependent in the, that, that are independent in semantic way, they should stay independent in the code. And I'm going to give an example for that. And extensibility, so it's supposed to be easy to extend the, 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 the once written code. And also it's supposed to be easy to extend the code written by some third party. Questions? Uh, and we are going to focus on this on this goal later on. So let us focus on, on like something very easy. So there is this first improving strategy that I told you about. So this this strategy just traverses iterates over the moves and and find uh, find and try to apply the first move uh, that is improving. Yes, and we are going to implement only this simple strategy in the beginning. Is it clear? And these are like conceptually, this is, these are the, the things that we need to know to implement our algorithm. And so for a given solution, we need to know what are the possible moves that can improve the solution. And for a given solution and given move, 
we need to know how good this move is. So it returns delta, which if it is positive, it means that this move is improving. If it's negative, it means that this move is non, non improving. And, and we, if we decided to, to really apply the move, we, we have to know how to, how to do it. And this is this commit which takes one, which takes solution and, and a move and try to apply this move on the solution. And this might be not successful, to, so it returns the, a boolean. So this is kind of important slide because we are going to use these this signatures all, all over the presentation, yes? So it's valid to return in the moves range something which isn't really possible to move into? Uh, so yes, uh, kind of. We've got, we've got use cases for that. So, but you don't have to worry too much about this. So you can think about it that it's always successful, more or less. But uh, the point is that, that this, this commit might have some probabilistic behavior inside. So it could, and this could cause this not successful, not successful commit, this first <coughs> reason. And the second reason that might be some uh, in the multi-threading setting the solution is might be like changed in the meantime and this move just became not valid or not improving or something like this okay so let's move on so this is the the first idea yes uh, so this is the first improving algorithm it takes reference to the solution to the current solution and it takes these three functors with the signatures that were introduced in the previous slide. And this is all in the local search namespace. I, I am going to use this LS all over the time. So, so this is extremely dependent on the where you start, right? Yes, that's right. So very often you like to uh, choose random starting point and just repeat it a couple of times. Uh, the question was, this is very dependent on the starting point. That's right. Uh, so, is it clear? It's supposed to be clear. And so, this is like possible implementation of this. I don't know if you this is like very straightforward. Just to so here we've got like this inner loop. We just traverse all the all the possible moves. We run the gain functor to check if the move is improving, and we try to commit this move here. So we so we use all of these functors, and we just repeat it in the while in while loop. And we have to return if this all if at least one iteration was successful, I just didn't want to include this here. So it's possible to implement, it's very easy. And it's, it is, I think, quite easy to use because we have only three functors here. And it's supposed to be efficient because it's, yes, this, this function can be just inlined it's in header file. It's, um, so we have to answer just two questions. Uh, Okay, loose coupling. Uh, there are no real dependencies here, so let's let's omit this. And we have to answer the question: How to extend this uh, this code? So assume that we would like to print. Okay, we we want we, we wrote these functors. Get or we, someone wrote these three functors, and we now we would like to run our local search and. Uh, print each move that was committed. That's reasonable. So how to do, th do this? So we write print commit adapter, which uh, uses our previous commit and just returns whatever this commit returns, and we print the move. So the answer to the question how do you 
how you extend these libraries just by function composition. It's a very simple idea, and we just run our local search algorithm and providing uh, the previous get move, previous gain, and this now this print commit adapter. This is the way of extending one's written code. Questions? Uh, I don't. I, okay. This is easy for me, uh, and I don't want. And I don't want to lose you guys. So maybe this is like trivial, and that's that's why, why there are no like questions or this very not clear. This is simple. That's great. That's what was I was expecting. Expecting, and and this component is very loosely coupled. That's what I meant. So it's this is like totally independent of the problem definition. Yes. So there is only one constraint. This move has has to be printable, and that's all. So that's what I meant by by, by loose coupling. And we are going to write our component this way. And we, I, I, we think that this is a very cool way of of writing our components. And OK, so what are the problems with this design? Uh, the problem is that this, this free functors might be dependent. And the worst case is that, for example, this commit functor like, assumes that we used some specific gain functor. They, they might be depend dependent. This, this is not always the case. Actually, in most of the cases, this, this is not the case, but it might happen. And this is like, very bad, because we definitely want to keep them together. So somehow ex en encapsulate this. And if you like look at this interface, this even looks like object-oriented interface. There's a like, solution in the beginning, always. This looks like C-style object-oriented interface. And also, when you just wrote facility location, and this, this is the end user. He just want to run local search on facility location. So he just didn't want to provide all of these functors. He just want to say, just give me all of this facility location stuff. And that's all. So, so this, is, this is just arguments for uh, that maybe we should somehow group these guys together. And the, so the first idea is maybe this just should be um, function members of the same class. Yeah, that's kind of obvious idea. <coughs> And this is not the best idea, actually. Because <coughs> when you want to write like good local search algorithm, it, it involves a lot of experimenting. So you just very often write many versions of this, this get moves functor, many versions of gain, and many versions of commit. And you just try to mix them together, uh, combine them. And if you, just, if you wanted to use this object-oriented approach, you'd have to, in this situation, you'd have to write 100 classes because you just essentially need all of these combinations. There are some ways to, of reducing that, but and this is not very nice. And also, adaptation, this, our way of extending library changes to inheritance, and if you, this, this is creepy, actually. And we don't like we, we we like the previous version, so we don't want object-oriented interface. So, what can what can we do? Uh, so the first idea is to group them together in one class, but not uh, not as member function. Just this is this class is actually a, a tuple, something like tuple containing these three guys. But we can provide like nice interface for calling this and nice way of creating this component, this called, this class is called components. Uh, I, I think it's not the perfect name, but I just don't have a better name. Uh, so, and we can have like functions to, to replace uh, one, of the com one of the components here. So this is the first idea. So, and now it, this interface looks like 
looks like that. So first we have to create these components and then we just run local search providing these components. So no real gain here. It just looks almost exactly the same. But, but this one is better because if you've got this facility location components one, once grouped, you just <coughs> can run it this way. So it looks a little bit better, maybe. Um, so what are, what are the problems? Actually, we, we, we must be aware that what we've done doesn't really create a new value. Uh, we just, there are these two approaches. We can, we can pass these three arguments separately or we can just come pass, uh, we can pass them in one object. And uh, what we've done is just combination of these two approaches. And there are still the same problems here, actually. Because still, if we've got two, uh, two functors that are dependent, the user still can replace one of these functors. It is just harder to do that. So, but let us assume that it is sensible and we just don't know how to make it better. It's, and yes, that's, that's true. But uh, so what we do not like about this implementation is that this, this is kind of trivial. We've got another framework in our library. And this is not a very generic solution. It's because we have to write this class uh, like from scratch, from the beginning. So we actually introduced uh, our, our own. Yes, yeah, so the problem is that it's not a very scalable solution. So we can, we're supposed to just use some kind of generic solution. So for example, use something like Boost Fusion Map to, to just keep them together. How many people know this, this fusion? So essentially what we've done is, is almost the same, but with nicer interface that, that just works well in our use cases. And as I said, this, this class over here is essentially a tuple. And so we can just use std tuple, but std tuple has this like ugly interface for retrieving elements. And we would like, we, we don't like that, so we would like to have our own that data structure and with possibility to retrieve elements by name. And with some other functionalities which are sensible here. So we introduce our, our new class, which is called components. Now it's components, not in local search, this is just generic solution. And I'm going to show you how to use it. So first of all, you need to introduce the names of the components. So here, these are these three names, get, moves, gain, and commit. And later on, we just need to write this first strange line, and you are, you are done. That's all you, ha you have to do to use these components. So now we've got components in the local search uh, namespace, which does essentially the same what the previous implementation of, of components in local search was, and we are using our generic solution components here. I, I, I don't want to explain this line, it's, it's just uh, some variadic templates and some template aliasing. And how, how can we use it? We can now construct our, our components providing implementation of these functors. Are you, with, are you with me? So, is it clear? Uh, any questions? Just do not hesitate to ask. And here we assume that these implementations are default constructible, but this is not general assumption. Uh, I'm just going to show you a couple of use cases and we are done with components. So, this is the way of retrieving components. So we just provide the name of this component and we can retrieve it. We can set another implementation of the components with the members set and we provide the name of the component and we can dire directly call the component also providing the name and the arguments and we can component we, we can replace the s one of the component with the component with different type that gives us gives us totally new components class 
So this is the way we use it. And we are actually pretty proud of this components class. And there are much more like interesting use cases and much more functio functionalities. But uh, unfortunately, we do not have enough time to right now to to discuss this. So it was like small off topic, and now that let's get back to to our design. So now we are just using this this components class, the generic class, and everything just looks essentially the same. Uh, so we we just call our first improving, provide reference to solution, and we provide our comp our our local search components. Um, so to, what are the problems here? Uh, okay, the previous problems were for someone at least there would be like not very important. So who cares if we pass like three parameters separately or in grouped in one class? So I mean, who cares? But actually, we've got like quite serious efficiency problem in this design. Uh, I think it's not very obvious. Uh, if you haven't seen that before, but may maybe and some ideas, what might be very inefficient here? It's not exactly simple to go through all your implementations. You have to set it every single time once you go through when you're looping through your implementations. Uh, I think I don't understand this. Uh, so every time that you switch one of your implementations, right, and then you have to go back into your um, into the function that you've called, you have to, again, manually go through with that every single time, which is inefficient. Did someone understood this, understand this question? Because, uh, okay, I suppose to repeat the question, but I quite don't understand it. I we still have only one implementation, right? Yeah, but I mean, I'm guessing you're going to have more than one implementation. So, yes, but you are passing your solution by reference, so it's this not, not actually cost you. This first observation and second observation is this function is probably going to be inlined anyway, so it actually doesn't matter. And okay, this is not the case, so I'm just going to. The problem is that these moves can have various types, as in this facility location. And so, so do you remember you remember this facility location? It has three different types of moves. And each of these type, types is represented by different C++ type. It's probably represented. Uh, and how to implement this get moves functor? So it's supposed to give us a range of all moves. But these moves can have different types. So this is kind of problem. And we've got to handle this problem. Uh, so we can handle it using dynamic polymorphism, yes. So, or we can just create some strange class with enums. So this we've got one class and it has enum inside which says, I am I am add move or I am remove move, and this is creepy. We don't want to do that. And the so, and if you if you write gain gain or and commit factors, this is not cool anymore because. This gain functor has to check what is the type of given move and then delegate the task to the appropriate place. So you can see that it is not nice to write these this functors and also it might cause inefficiencies, which is maybe even more important. And we can. Yes, is it clear? So how can we solve this problem? This actually, the, the idea is very easy. So now we can have <coughs> components for each type of move. And let, so, and library should just somehow handle it and make it efficiently. So now we've got components for add. And this, this, this guy here just contains these three functors as the same as before, and this guy over here is the same, but this is three factors assuming that the move is add. And this is and now our our first improvement is just variadic template. 
and it's supposed to just do it efficient, do it efficiently. <coughs> and we also gain like additional flexibility because we can now very easily remove one one type of move. We can like just change the ordering, or we can like double this one. And this might might look strange, but sometimes in, it it makes sense to do that, for example, if there is some probabilistic behavior inside of this. So we, we gain like some, some flexibility here. And, and this is actually the end of the design. So now I'm, I, I want to show you like typical implementation. So we always need, need the model so the, this this class which rep represents <coughs> represents our solution, and in this case we just introduced an interface which has four member functions. Uh, this interface, this this member function add facility, which just adds facility to the solution and returns what is difference in the cost. And the analogous one is remove facility, and we've got just two member functions to to. Uh, retrieve unchosen facilities and chosen facilities and and this is the implementation of of factors uh, connected to add move and I just don't want to want you to understand this code although it's very simple uh, I just want to, s to just show you that it is very easy to Im implement this and uh, it fits into one slide and I made all of these templates because we just want to reduce dependencies in our code, but they do not have to be templates. So the end user does not have to uh, write templates himself. Yes? In that case, I'm wondering about the complexity of add and remove facility. Because if I um, remove a facility, for example, I have to recompute all the distances. So I think that this is an expensive operation. Yes. And you'd need a different interface to get the gain. So then you'd need, yeah, two solutions, for example. But we've got like exactly okay. The question it works with the interface, but the um, facility location gain add doesn't seem efficient. Okay. The the remark was the observation was that. It looks like inefficient because we have to. Uh, sorry, not this, but uh, this one. Mm -hmm. Because because we we have to recompute all of this cost, and maybe we're supposed to just maybe we can like gain something if, if we just do these two guys together. Yes, yeah. and that's right observation. This is just toy problem and you can just if you want to optimize it you can optimize it and yes that's right and and this is just like toy problem and this may be not the best uh, I, I think it's very nice problem actually but yes the, the, the observation is, is valid it might be valid also although I actually implement it this way it's almost actual implementation and I think you cannot gain you, you just there are no benefits of doing this together as far as I know maybe if you've got like better idea we can discuss this online okay so so we finish our design and this is the place where when, where we can we, we should ask ourselves the question for end user is it worth life to worth life to, to, to use this library? And so what can we gain? What are the benefits? And even someone might say that the code is the code is well structured and so on so on. And you also gain some flexibility with uh, managing different kind of moves. And the library just make makes it efficient, and this is not maybe so obvious how to how to make it efficient in an efficient way. But on the other hand, the user has to 
has to uh, understand this library, read the documentation, and so on and so on. So I think at this point, it's not very clear if it's worthwhile to, to use this library. Do we have like real benefits? And in the next section, I, I'm, I'll going to show you what are the more specific usage and where is the real power of this library. So how, how just, we, we're still gonna use only these three functors and we are going to build like much more complicated algorithm, algorithms on using only these three functors and, and the library. And that's what in my opinion is the real power of this library. So, There are many different like strategies in local search, and I'm going to to to, to explain them to you. Uh, the first one is called hill, hill climbing. So this is like the very simple and obvious strategy. We just only choose the improving moves. So why why should we change this strategy? So why should we like accept the move that is not improving? Excuse me? You can potentially search a larger space. Yes, you can search larger space. So you can get stuck in this local local maximum and you just want to leave it somehow. So so there are many, many like different strategies which accepts also non-improving moves. And the first first one is like very trivial. It's like opposite to the hill climb. It's called random walk. So it just accepts each move. It looks strange, but Sometimes it's reasonable. And there is another strategy which is called simulate anything. And uh, as far as I know, this, this is like the most popular strategy and, and it's very useful in practice. So this one is worth not, not seeing. And this strategy, in this strategy, we, this is a very rough description, like right? very, very rough. But with small probability, we accept also non-improving moves. So there is like random process which decides which, which if the non-improving moves are accepted, and usually improving moves are all always accepted. But this is not clear as well. And the last idea is tab is the tab search, and this in this in his like very basic version works essentially like like random walk, but it remembers like some number of the previously visited solution and it tried to avoid the solution. So it's like avoiding cycles in, in your search. So these are like the most popular, as far as I know, strategies. And I'm going to show you how to, how to implement them in the library. So we'll start with simulated learning. And we like all, always we, we assume that we implemented these three factors: get moves, gain, and commit. They are like exactly the same as, as as in previous cases, and we are just going to use them to to write like more complex algorithms. Okay, so now I'm going to explain you in more details what simulated learning is, uh, but it's still going to be quite rough. So, in a simulated learning, we we choose non-improving moves with some probability, and this probability depends on, on two factors. And the first factor is like quite of obvious, so the moves that are better has, have bigger chance of being accepted. Yes, so this is kind of obvious. And the second factor is, is a global factor, which is called temperature. And the idea is that when the temperature is high, the the moves, the non-improving move, moves have bigger chance of being accepted, and if the so, if the temperature just tends to to infinity, uh, this the simulated annealing works like more or less like random walk, because all of the moves are are accepted, and if the temperatures tends to zero, it it works like hill climbing more or less. And 
the idea is to start with with big temperature to allow like wide surge and while the time passes we the, tem the temperature is lowering this was like I know like quite rough description of simulating an ink there are like many details that are there but and now I'm going to show you how, how can you implement this 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 strategy in in the library so first of all you need to know what is the current temperature so and how how does it change and this is usually use named cooling scheme so what this one this is the name cooling and now our our temperature is like always equals 5 it's like pretty stupid cooling scheme but we are going to work with that and all we have to do we just use the gain adapter from the library we provide the previous gain and the cooling scheme and we received our new gain which we call gain simulate simulated and in gain and that that's essentially all and we run our our algorithm and it just works so so actually I, I, I think this is like very cool because actually there is like the cost of implementing this this particle simulated and ink was like 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 there is there is no almost no additional cost so you just you just write cooling you you just create adapter and just run it and that's all and as I said this cooling scheme is like pretty stupid so you probably should use cooling scheme from library and oh this looks like terrible it's exponential cooling scheme dependent on iteration and you someone might say that okay user has to understand what this function means and it's like looks like complicated but this is like general problem in in simulated technique and in, in local search in general that in my in my opinion if you want to successfully run this algorithm you must more or less understand what's going on in the like behind behind of this so this is not in my opinion not like black box and it's hard to bypass this assumption any questions Because well, the gain could be arbitrarily small or large. Yes. If you want to do this randomization, you must not overdo it on the range of the gain. Oh, okay. The the remark was, as far as I understood, that this this uh, range of this cooling it's 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 somehow connected to the range of this gain. At and of course this is this right. So as I told you, you must understand this this what what is going on here and here you, you provide these parameters and I, they are of course strictly connected to your problem to your current problem you cannot just take the defaults and just hope it's going to work you just need some experimentation or just you have to rethink it that's 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 the case that's what what was i actually said before yes so you just do must be aware of what what's happening here um, so, <coughs> when you work with algorithms like simulated and ink, they they just uh, explore our like. It might be the case that they they found like very good solution, but because of unlucky sampling, the algorithm leave that solution and end up in much worse solution. It just might happen uh, if you are unlucky. So you, sometimes you, you might want to just each time when you find like the 
the better solution than the previous best, you just want to record it sometimes, yes? And here's the way of doing that in, in, in the library. So we just got another adapter from the library, which is called record solution commit adapter, which just pre takes previous commit and takes reference to the best, and it will just going to uh, update the best each time we improved our solution, the, the best solution. And of course, it, it's not for free, so it, because this introduces additional copies. So sometimes, so it's up to, up to the user if you want to use it, but by default, it's, we are not recording the, the best one, but it can be easily done. So I think you've got the idea. We just, all, all the time, we're just writing these adapters and they can be composed and it just works. Uh, so there is this table search and in the table search, as I told you, uh, you just remember some numbers of previous moves and you try, try to avoid them. And that's all, you, you just have to write another adapter and, and it works. So this time adapter take, this is the gain adapter and take, it takes previous gain and it needs a data structure to remember these moves. <coughs> Yes, so this, this is a container or some, something like container which actually this, this one remembers last 20, 20 pairs of solution move. And of course, it, it, here we use some, some, some table list from the library, but of course it can be replaced with the user-defined table list. It's just a very simple concept. It has to member functions. I, I think we shouldn't just go into details if, unless you want to. And we just run here. We just provide previous get moves, this gain table, which was, is computed here, and the record solution commit, which was introduced before. And just compiles and it works. Any questions? And what happens if we want to combine these two strategies? Combine table search and simulator ink? That's nothing easier, we just compose these two functions. So now we, we create our table gain adapter and provide this simulated ink gain which was introduced before and just we comp you compose them, this, you run it and it works. You can do it other way around and it actually means something different and this is like very flexible and you can use it and okay so this were like specific usage and by implementing them I, I just wanted to show you that that this framework and this design is very flexible and it's easy to extend it and it's very easy to implement like standard algorithms used in local search. Any questions? <coughs> So we were working on this only one first improving strategy like all the time. So we iterate through the moves and we take the first move that is improving. But there are of course un other strategies. So there, are, there is this best improving strategy which takes the best improving moves and try actually takes the best move, check if, if this is improving and if this is improving it applies the move. And there is the first strategy which just takes the best move and, and apply it. So it could be on improving. And from our experience, actually, these three strategies covers like all the cases that we, we were able to, to think of. And even if you actually think of something fancy, it can be like at least from our experience, re reduced to do one of these three strategies. And uh, all of the previous examples, in the, all of the previous examples, you can replace this first improving with either this or this, and it just works and it compi compiles. 
it does not always make sense to do that, but it's just full, fully compatible. And there is also like very general version, so you can, of course, implement your own strategy if you want. So here you can use one of these free strategies, and there is like also some other kind of additional stop conditions or some additional action which can be performed after each round of local search. So this local search is actually useful because of these additional arguments, and if you really want to, you can implement your own strategy as well. I'm not going to details how to how how should you do this. Any questions? Okay. So now I'm going to show you uh, how how can we implement this or what is the main idea of implementation. And here are, we are going to focus on the best improving implementation. We are, we are talking mostly about first improving, but this one is actually much more interesting. So that's why we are going to focus on that. So what this, this algorithm must make. So we've got three ranges of, of moves. These moves has, have different types. And for each of these moves, we need to compute the the gain so there is a delta which if this uh, positive it means that the smooth is improving and later on we just compute the maximum all of, of this list and if the uh, the move the best found move is is improving we applied this this move using appropriate commit factor is it clear and should this, all of these delta types, should, sh should they be the same type? Um, and yeah, it, was it is written like they are the same, but actually we need to only compare these types. So we don't, do not want to impose any constraints that are not really needed. So the only, only assumption is that we need to compare this, this, and this. So this, this, this ranges could be actually of different types. Consist of elements of different type. How do you choose your, like, <coughs> how many adds and how many removes and how many swaps you're gonna do? Is that just all possible? Uh, these are just, you know, like normal runtime, runtime ranges, yes? So. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, I got you. But, but, <coughs> like, uh, number of possible type of moves is, is like compile time. Uh, so in order to, to, to do that, we are going to focus on like much simpler tasks. So we are going to print the maximum of polymorphic list. And although this looks like much simpler task, it it's actually has all of the problems of the previous task. So, so if you like were totally lost in this local search or and this is the the, the nice point to ni nice point to to start listening again because it's like totally like independent problem so now we are going to focus on very very easy problem so we've got the list containing of three three elements they are of different type and we would like to print the maximum of this list Uh, and how to do this? Uh, so, so I think like you, you can imagine many implementations, like direct, direct implementations using some some templates. It's actually not very hard to do. Uh, but here we would like to use like some really nice abstraction, that's reusable uh, abstraction, and. We choose uh, the function which is called fold, and this is actually well-known construction for functional programming. And 
we all know no fault because this is like essentially it it, it does the same as, as STD accumulate. Who heard about fault before? Okay, still I'm there are a couple of people I'm going to explain what what happens here. So to if this is our sequence, to in order to compute fault, you just run our functor on the accumulator and first element of the sequence, and this gives us the new accumulator, and we use this new accumulator, and we run our functor with this new accumulator and the second element of the sequence, and we just iterate this. And the last accumulator is <coughs> the result of our fault. And this is like very simple construction, but it's, it's actually very powerful. And you can, uh, you can build many other algorithms on top of fault. So we are going to, to use this, this uh, algorithm uh, to, to compute, the, to print the maximum of the polymorphic list. So assume that we've got some implementation of this fault, and the essential part of, 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 our, of our work is to implement this functor here. So we are going to do this. So this is the implementation. We've got the functor f, which takes the accumulator, which is the, pr the, the, the best one uh, found so far, and the, this is the next element of the sequence. And if our new element is, is better than the previous best, we return the new element, and we, turn, we return previous best otherwise. It's like very easy, isn't it? <coughs> but actually, this co code is, is wrong. It's, it's, n it's not going to compile in some case. Okay. Can you see the problem? No, uh, I mean well, even if they are comparable, it's yeah, that's what, that's the no. Uh, it's yes. The, the return type, if best and number are different types, what what type does it return? Yes. So okay, I'm going to repeat both the question. The first uh, the first remark was they must be comparable. Uh, yes, and this is our assumption, and but assume that they are comparable. The problem is that we don't know what is the return type of this function. That's, and uh, the point is even if, if uh, this, this type are, are convertible, I mean one of this type is con convertible to another, it still doesn't going to work in this setting. So this is like, like a problem. So the, the problem is that in C++ we, we cannot return uh, like one function cannot return values of different types. So we, we would like to s bypass this problem somehow. <coughs> and in, w in order to, to resolve this problem, we are going to introduce like slightly modified fault. And it is called polymorphic fault. And, and now instead of normally fault takes functor, accumulator and sequence and now our our polymorphic fault is going to take accumulator functor and accumulator data instead of accumulator and what it does it actually delegates all of the work to this fault so here we just this fault uh, takes functor accumulator functor accumulator data and two iterators to the beginning and the end of this of the sequence and so now we are going to focus on the implementation of this fault. So this fault has two overloads of operator of parentheses oper operator. The first one covers the case when our collection is empty. Yeah, so we've got these two the same types here. And in this case we just call accumulator factor uh, providing accumulator data and return that. So this was like the simple case. 
and there is another case where when this this uh, collection is not empty so we still run our functor providing the, fir the, the, the fir first element of the sequence current accumulator functor and current accumulator data and this functor is supposed to return new accumulator data and new accumu accumulator functor but it cannot do it directly because of this problem with type, types so now instead of of returning returning this, this type this, this factor is going to call new factor which is called continuation and this is the way to bypass this problem of of, of this factor returning things of different types because this factor might be something that can take arguments of different types and the question is what this continuation is supposed to do. Is it clear what, what is happening here? What, what is the main idea? So this factor is supposed to return new accumulator stuff. And now instead of returning accumulator stuff, it's going to call continuation providing this accumulator, new accumulator stuff. And the question is in I do not ask about the, the, the code, I ask like in semantic way, what is this continuation supposed to be? Any ideas? Any questions? This whole construction is actually not very semantically like trivial, so I think it's it's nice to like think a little bit what it's supposed to be. Any ideas? Nope. Well, we could call it a visitor because it needs to accept a range of types and do something like that. The comment was it's supposed to call a visitor. No, we just want to we just want to make something like redirect. It's supposed to just we it's supposed to recursively call this fault with the next element. Yes, so we're supposed to increment our iterator and just go on. This was supposed to happen and this is the way how to achieve this. So continuation is just ourselves with with this functor and we increment the iterator pointing to begin. And it looks like really creepy but it really works. And what is the point? It's it is in, it's hidden inside of inside of the fault implementation. So it's our utility. So once we implemented this, we we can use it. And the usage is actually very simple. So the implementation is creepy, but who cares? I just want to give you some time to parse this. Because at least for me it's not like very trivial. Are there any questions? So can you go back to the slide where you have the the first one you showed that didn't work? Yes, yeah, sure. Or maybe I can show you the slide with the factor that is actually working. Oh okay, I can just go. Uh, oh, sorry, not this way. Yeah. Yes. So here, if you return the like 
ternary num less than best return either num or best. It's just going to deduce the return type, and that works. What can you do to just uh, okay? The, the so like ternary like condition question mark uh, true value false value. I think it's not going to work. Uh, uh, the it will work. the Right, it'll reduce so the common type between your two arguments. If there is one. If there is one. So okay, there, so the, the, comment, the comment was that you can write this as far as I understood, like, like, yeah, like number, number, yes, and one. Um, and yeah, yes, I just don't remember. I don't use it very often. And now, now, if if we can convert one of the type to another one, the, it might work. No, it will work if they have a, some sort of common type, and then you specialize. Yes, but it might work. So, and you can maybe if it if this doesn't work, you can maybe some do it so in some other way. But this imposes uh, like additional constraints that there is a, like a common type, and we do not want to impose this constraint. And in our solution, we only impose the constraint that they are really comparable, and there is, it doesn't have to, the, the common type does not, doesn't have to exist, and this is the main difference. So your, your implementation is, is probably going to work in many cases, but the, the, this implementation is a little, a little bit more general. Is this, is this clear? Yeah. Okay, so I hope it is more or less clear and now let's see how to solve our original problem that is how to how to implement our our functor now. So now we are doing, doing essentially the same. So now our accumulator data, it's, it is uh, currently the best, the, the biggest number. And now, instead of like returning the, the new best number, we call continuation and we provide this number. <coughs> and we also provide the functor which just prints this number. And we just return the previous accumulator functor and previous accumulator data otherwise. So. The implementation of, of this fault was, was creepy and scary, and, but implementation of this, of this factor is actually almost the same as, as, as before. And that's what, what matters here. And we can call it. So we call our polymorphic fault, we provide this factor, we provide like boundary condition. So here we just print that collection is empty, we provide this is like special element which is smaller than everything. So what, what's the type of minus infinity? The type, type of minus infinity is minus infinity. It is just like struct which uh, has template op operators, uh, comparison operators, and it's just, it's smaller than everything. It is actually pretty okay. easy to write. Uh, to write simple version of this, I actually try to extend this, and it's not so easy anyway. So this is like okay, we we could like we we doesn't have to make this this way. We can just write an if here, so check if the collection is empty, print if it is empty, and take the first element and provide if this if this not empty, we can take the first element and and put it in here. But I I like this solution with this kind of, I think this is nicer. <laughs> By the way, so continuation is advertised on the functor n. Yes. The number or yes. Is the number and the egg data could have different types, right? That was the presumption. Yes. That means that the type of continuation is different depending by whether you return the first or second. So how does That's right. this work versus the previous example? Because we do not, uh, this is function call. This is not object. Oh, maybe this is not clear. This is not, fu this is not object of type continuation. This is function call. And this is template function, which it was. When it returns the same time. Okay, 
yes. So this continuation was this bind, and this is actually yeah, yeah, template call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we've got assumption here that all of this accumulate factor, they must all of them must return the same type. So we've got this assumption, but it's not 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 very constraining. So we did it, and we use exactly the same technique to write our best improving. Okay, so maybe I'm supposed to speed up. Uh, and it's a really interesting exercise to, to see what's going on here, really. So, assume we've got this call, and let's denote n as a number of, of different types. So, here we've got three different types. We only use int, float, and long, long. And m is the number of object passed. So here it's we've just passed seven objects, seven different different objects. Clear? So how many uh, template instantiation we are going to have in this call, more or less? And uh, the answer is many. Like, so if this, it's n times m, more or less. Uh, and the, another interesting question is, what happens if compiler decides to inline all of this function, like here? So how, how, how big code it is going to produce? And this is like scary because it's going to produce like the code which is exponential in in size of the of, of the code and yes this is like what uh, and actually I, I just didn't make uh, didn't make like real cases so I just didn't because in in I didn't check what compilers really does. So this, like, if you can com compute it all like, like on paper, but because in our use case, actually, we just this vector is like as usually at at most three elements, so we just don't care so much. But it's like, at least for me, it's like interesting observation that you can like v pretty easily write a code which later on can be in exponential size <laughs> after compilation. Any questions? <coughs> okay. Um, and this is all, almost the end of the talk. <coughs> so we there are other local searches libraries when we done some benchmarking so this like the very the simplest hill climbing and there are these different libraries that we found there written in C++ and ours of course is the best one and it's like much much faster than this one and <laughs> the reason is that they actually okay and this in this test, we we, we we just we were working on like n queens problems, so we just want to put n queens uh, on the chessboard in the way they are not attacking themselves, and it's like well-known toy, toy problem, and uh, the it's very easy to compute this gain and commit and <coughs> and this kind of stuff. So so the most of the computation time is is actually is in library, so that's important to th in this comparison. And this algorithm were like totally the same. So they started with the same solution, they <coughs> finished in the same solution, they made exactly the same moves in the way to the solution. And uh, and we are just faster. And also, it's hard to measure which uh, which design is more complicated. There are like no no hard measures, uh, not many hard measures. We measured how many functions do you have to write to to 
uh, to program like very simple hill, hill climbing. And in our case, you must write more or less three functions. And this is like the results for our li for other libraries. Let's, let's just focus on easy local. You have to write like seven class and 19 member functions to write like this hill climbing. Um, so, of course, this is like not maybe the best measure because in our library you just have to use this components class and maybe this is not very standard, so it's harder to understand and so it's not so clear that you, you know that maybe this 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 in MathLib you just have to write only one class and and five member functions and but still we, we've got we think that our design is very reasonable and we are getting to the end so this is the web page of our project <coughs> this this was only one framework we just implemented much more many many nice algorithms uh, we are currently working on nice interface for linear programming um, so just please visit it and also uh, we are very interested in any comments any remarks and any problems and if you found something like very not not very intuitive just please contact me and and thank you. So, are there any questions? Okay, so thank you very much.